Hello, and welcome to the Walk With Kev podcast. It is Friday morning, it is just after seven o'clock, and today I want to talk about the fundamental human movements and how to approach working out and strength training. So, if you're new to working out and new to strength training, I think it can actually pre- be pretty, pretty confusing. There's a lot of exercises to do. There's a lot of people online that have, you know, different approaches. They're all trying to sell you their approach. Um, and many of them will tell you that their approach is the best approach, which is fine. It might be. It might be the best for them. It might be the best for you if you, if you follow that approach. Um, but I think a good way to approach working out is to think about high-level concepts rather than specific exercises and specific types of working out. So in terms of high-level concepts, you can think about working out by looking at what are called the fundamental human movements. And these movements are push, pull, hinge, and squat. So these are the things that your body does kind of day to day, whether you realize it or not. So we'll go through each one of those and talk about it from a a pretty high level today. Um, This is how I kind of approach my workouts, how I program my workouts. Um, Every workout consists of a push, a pull, a hinge, a squat. Um, So let's start, let's go through one by one. The push is probably one of the easier ones. Um, If you think about pushing movements, uh, straight away your mind is probably drawn to the push up. So that would be known as a horizontal push movement. So horizontal push is basically your your arms are coming out in in front of your body. So that would be a push up, a bench press, um, any sort of dumbbell pressing movement. Um, It will generally target your your chest, your triceps, the muscles at the back of your arms, opposite your biceps. Um, And yeah, that's horizontal push, but there's also vertical push. So vertical push would be overhead. So that would be a dumbbell press, kettlebell press, military press. Basically, any time you're taking something and going from shoulder to over your head uh, would be a, a vertical press. That's probably my favorite form of pressing movement. Um, I think it's a good idea to to build strength in your shoulders and build mobility in your shoulders. Um, In order to do that movement, you have to be able to kind of tense and control the the tension in your entire body. Um, You need to have pretty good posture. You need to have pretty good shoulder mobility to actually get yourself into the position where your hand is is up overhead like that. So of the two push movements, I mean, I do both, but for me personally, I prefer the, the overhead press. And they are the, the pushing movements. For pulling movements then, you've basically got your pull up, your chin up kind of movements. So that would be just like we have a vertical push, we have a vertical pull. So imagine hanging from a bar, pulling yourself up, and um, that's gonna be your, your pull movement. Now, for me, that's probably one of the more important movements on the list. Um, with arthritis, especially in the spine, Posture is really important. So in doing a vertical pull, in doing pull-ups, yeah, you will strengthen a lot of the muscles in the back. So your, your lats will get a lot stronger, um, <coughs> your upper back muscles, and this will, it'll affect your posture. So it'll, f- I don't want to say force, but your muscles will be able to c- contract, pull your back, uh, pull your back tight and help you stand upright. Um, the problem with pull-ups is that they're hard. Right? A lot of people really struggle with pull-ups. Um, and, and for good reason. You know, they, you're, you have to lift your entire body weight. It can take a lot of practice. Um, but there are progressions, there are ways to, to go about it. Even if you can't do one pull-up, you have a, a lot of options. I'll probably go through that in a future, in a future video. So similar to the push movement, you've got the vertical pull, You've also got a horizontal pull. So that's where, um, think of kind of the opposite of a push-up, right? It's where you're, you're pulling towards you. So an example of this might be an inverted row. So let's say you've got a bar set up at around chest height. So around here, um, you get under the bar 
so you're kind of hanging with your body probably not it's not going to be parallel to the ground right you're going to be at a bit of an angle but basically you're pulling more in that direction it's kind of like a rowing a rowing movement um, so that would be your your horizontal pull both are great like i said especially for me for my back I want to maintain good posture I want to maintain good strong back muscles so they are very very important to me also people tend to focus a lot on push movements especially men men like to bench press i think so what can happen is as you're doing a lot of push-ups or doing a lot of bench presses your chest muscles can get quite strong but also quite tight right and your pec will attach kind of into your your shoulder here and when that's tight when you're overworking it it can pull your shoulders forward so having a good pull exercise can help compensate for that it will pull your shoulders back a little bit so you don't get that kind of rounded over arched view and you or arch kind of feeling in your shoulders so that's push and pull next is hinge so hinge is probably a less intuitive movement um but it's probably one of the more important ones um again especially for me with arthritis it affects my hips the first i, I mentioned the other day the first time i ever felt an arthritis flare-up it was in my hips and um, it made it sort of walk and made it very uncomfortable so having strength and power in my hips is really important and that's where the hinge happens so a hinge movement would be a deadlift romanian deadlift um, a kettlebell swing is a, a kind of a perfect hinge movement and basically it's where you bend at the hips so if you think about bending over to pick something up your hinge is think about it like having as much bend as possible in your hips while having as little bend as possible in your knees right so people sometimes say maximum hip flexion minimum knee flexion um, and that's just talking about the bend in those joints so with a deadlift you're bending over you've got a bar on the ground with you got a barbell on the ground with some plates on it you're grabbing it you're picking it up right sounds simple enough but really you need to deliver all of the power coming from your hips coming from your glute muscles coming from your hamstrings that's where the the hinge is and the thing about the hinge is you know that's where that's where most of the power in your body is that's where the big muscles so um strong man eddie hall a couple of years ago broke the world record for deadlifting he lifted 500 kilos which is pretty pretty insane he lifted that off the ground that was a hinge the power there was coming from you know his hips his glutes hamstrings were all heavily involved in that lift it's also where you know if you're an athlete and you need to be able to kind of take off quickly turn on the spot a lot of that power is coming from your hips if you listen to a boxer they will often say um, you punch from your hips you know the the movement the twist of your body is coming from uh, putting tension into the hips right and twisting your body and putting your whole body behind the the actual punch so this is pretty important especially for athletes um, with a kettlebell swing if you haven't seen one basically you're holding a kettlebell you're swinging it between your legs and up to about chest height and that entire movement should be driven by your hips your hands are holding the kettlebell but really your arms are kind of like pieces of string in that movement and um, they're just tied to the kettlebell it's your hip that's um, thrusting forward and sending the the kettlebell up to chest height and your fingers are just kind of holding on and the final movement is squat so um, I think most people probably know what a squat looks like where basically you are sitting down sitting down back onto the ground or back onto your heels um, I think the the best place to look for a squat in terms of how to do a good squat is to actually look at kids right if you've got a toddler like a two-year-old or something like that and you watch them interact with something on the ground what they will do is they will sit their hips back and down so that the back of their legs their hamstring and the back of their upper legs touches the back of their lower legs and their calves their body kind of slides down in between their legs right now this movement again i mean I've said every movement is very important to me but they are all very important for me this one you know it'll build a lot of strength in your legs learning to squat a lot of mobility in your hips 
Um, if you sit in the bottom of a deep squat, it will open up your hips. So it's good to be comfortable in that position. But again, with arthritis, it can be, you know, you can be stiff, as I've mentioned before, sitting down on a chair, going from sitting to standing, standing to sitting, can be pretty stiff. So having good squat form can help you get up um, and get down, right? And that's obviously pretty important, especially as we age, having strength, strength in your legs to be able to do that, to maintain mobility um, is, is pretty important. So there are all the movements, push, pull, hinge, squat. And when you think about it, as you're moving through the day, I think most of the moving you're doing is probably some combination of one or more of those, one or more of those movements. These movements are also what you would call compound movements. So a compound movement is basically any way you move your body that is using multiple joints, right? So for the squat, you've got your knees, your ankles, your hips are all engaged. For the push movements, you've got your shoulders, your elbows. Um, for the hinge, again, you've got knees, you've got hips, and pull, shoulders and elbows. So compound movements is basically that's where that's where the most bang for your buck is in terms of your training. So when you're doing straight training, you want to put on some muscle, you want to get strong. Doing these big compound movements is probably one of the better ways to get there. Now, you can also do isolation type movements. An isolation might be a, a bicep curl where basically you're, you're lifting your arm. That's just your elbow joint is working there. Um, and it's focusing specifically on your bicep. So that's why it's called an isolation exercise. But we won't worry about them for now. You can actually, you can go a pretty long way just focusing on those four fundamental movements. So for a long time, actually I still do, but the way I work out is I will lift at least three times a day, uh, three times a week. And what I'll basically do is pick one of the movements and I will focus on that movement for, you know, my heavy movement for that day, and then just have the other two movements or other three movements in there as well for good measure. So what that looks like is on Monday, I might do heavy squats. So squat movement on Monday is my, is my heavy movement. Um, and then after that, I might do some pull-ups, some push-ups, and maybe some kettlebell swings, right? So I've got my pull, push, hinge, squat, I've got heavy squats going on, so my legs are gonna be tired, um, the squats are gonna to be tough, but then I do my pull-ups, I do my push-ups, I do my kettlebell swings, and I, I make them pretty easy. I mean, I still wanna challenge myself, um, but they'll be relatively easy. So that's Monday. Then on Wednesday, I might make that a push day. So the push day on Wednesday, I might do some heavy, one arm kettlebell presses, right? So I'm doing a bunch of sets, they're heavy, my shoulders are getting really tired. Uh, and yeah, that's my push movement is, uh, is the one I'm pushing that day. And then I'll do some squats, um, maybe chin ups and maybe kettlebell swings um, after I've done that, right? So again, it's the same, same principle, one heavy and three light morning. So, the one heavy three light then continues through to Friday, where Friday might be my pull day. Um, <clears throat> on the pull day, I'll do loads of pull-ups, as you might imagine. I think you're probably getting the idea of how this works at this point. Then I'll do some squats, I'll do some cowbell swings, I might do some light overhead presses, or maybe some push-ups, you know, get a push movement in there. And that's my three days of working out. Now, you might listen to that and say, well, where's your hinge? Where's your heavy hinge day? When I'm working, working out from home, a heavy hinge day is hard because I don't have a barbell, right? Um, I've only got kettlebells. So what I'll do instead is I'll just do kettlebell swings every day. In the gym, what I'll probably do is combine deadlifts with either overhead press-ups or pull-ups. So I have my hinge and push or pull in one day, right? So just get the deadlift. In there is a heavy day as well, um, but mix that with a lower body, a lower body exercise. So that's three days. You could also do this four days, right? Where you could have a heavy hinge day as well and, and kind of work it like that. But hopefully, 
hopefully it's clear why focusing on these concepts can be useful, right? Now, you don't need to worry about exercises anymore. You don't need to think about all the different exercises. You just need to think about pull, push, hinge, squat. Have I got them covered? Throw in a walk and you're gonna be in a pretty good place, right? So I've got my walk done for today. I'm actually doing a workout program called Easy Strength at the moment, which I'll talk about another day. I just started this week, so later on I'll be going to the gym. I will do some deadlifts, some overhead presses, some chin-ups. That will be the main part of the, the workout. I'll also get some kettlebell swings in there. Um, there'll also be squats, but more as a warm-up capacity. This, this particular workout routine doesn't focus on squats <coughs> in terms of um, you know, building strength and doing, doing heavy lifting. So, yeah, I'm, I'll maybe share one of those workouts someday so you can see what that looks like. Um, but yeah, if you get out for a walk, get a bit of cardio in, get some blood moving, some oxygen moving around your brain, and then do one of these workouts. You can use weights, you can use kettlebells, you can do it with just calisthenics. Uh, the one thing about calisthenics is, uh, which is just body weight exercise, is it can be difficult to get your hinge in. So you've obviously got pull-ups, push-ups, and bodyweight squats, but the hinge can be a bit more challenging for calisthenics. That's why I think having a kettlebell lying around is great. You can get a lot done and kind of plug some of the gaps that, that calisthenics has. But there are ways to work uh, the hinge movement in calisthenics as well. You can do things like bridges, hip raises, that sort of thing. Um, and again, I'll, in a future video, because I'm coming to the end of the walk now, uh, we'll probably talk about calisthenics and how to approach those sorts of workouts. But to summarize, push, pull, hinge, squat, fundamental human movements. If you think about working out and think about how to create good workouts um, that you can sustain over a long period of time, if you cover your push, pull, hinge, squat, you'll have your bases covered. Um, and over time you can, you can do that, you can learn what your body likes, what your body doesn't like, what it's responding to. Um, and like everything I talk about here, it's a journey, right? You've got to explore, figure out uh, what works for your body. Again, especially if you've got arthritis, you need to learn to listen to your body, listen to the warning system, or listen to the, any sort of warning sounds that are coming, any pain, discomfort. Um, but the fundamental movements will, will get you a long way. And I'm at the end of my walk. So thank you for joining me today and I will see you tomorrow.